Welcome to the Quick Galloper YouTube channel. Please like, subscribe, share, and hit the notification bell. This remarkable narrative unravels a groom beyond compare, a story that resonates with the power of enduring commitment and the richness of a shared journey through life's many seasons. Alvin Graham's tale is not one of fleeting moments or temporary bonds. His voice, seasoned with the wisdom of years, carries with it the weight of experience. Alvin takes us on a journey through the years, the challenges faced and overcome. As Alvin Graham reflects on his life as a groom, he does so with the eloquence of one who has not just observed life, but has lived it to the fullest. Let us honour Alvin Graham, whose life as a groom has been an inspiration to us all. Quick Gallop, jhay.com and its YouTube channel, The Quick Galloper, present the lifetime narrative of groom Alvin Alexander Graham, the man known as Fish and Rice. Today we have with us Alvin Alexander Graham, the man popularly called Fish and Rice. Good morning, Mr. Graham. Morning, gentlemen. And I'm here waiting to say what you people, a question you'd have to ask of me and what you want to find out about me. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very, very interested in that because I'm in the game for over a period of years and no one ever gave me this personal privilege to be in the position that I'm into presently. So I appreciate the whole lot. Well, I must say welcome to The Quick Gallop and its YouTube channel, The Quick Galloper and we are happy to have you. That's yes, what sir. we are here for, to show the general public all that happens on the backstretch in racing in Jamaica. And it's very fortunate you people appreciate uh, racing on that particular issue. And the grooms, that is the most important factor in racing because the other person who takes care of the machinery and in every industry, the people who take care of the machinery is the most important person because without us there is no races that can be run. <laughs> and that being said, where and how did Fish and Rice get involved in horse racing? In horses. I was born in Nagwed, 1947, 6th of June, and there and then you, you didn't have any short pass cut to go to the sea. And they were asking me, always walk in the morning, go take the asses to the sea and then come back in, in that channel. So one of these mornings I met a gentleman by the name of Winston Dixon. And he asked me if I would love to ride asses. And I said, yes, I would love to be a jockey. And he take me to Mr. C.C. C. C. Thomas table, a man that used to have an owner and trainer's license. In those days you could get owners and trainer's license at the same time. He used to have asses like Clifton Sport. Strawberry Royal Cash and all those horses in training. So I was there for a period of time and then my apprentice master, which is Mr. C. C. Thomas, died and he has to left to attend to his personal business. So I left and get back home. When I get back home... About what year we're talking about? I'm talking about between 1962, 63, 64, 65. Oh. Because from I was 10 years old, I can't come into racing. I came into racing on that part that time. And you can continue to tell us how you Well, my you. performance was very good in exercising horses because I used to exercise horses with men like Glenford Walker, E. Thomas Manny 92, um, Yuli Jackson and all those Jack. So and they used to give me a rating. But eventually I have to get back home and come back in the game to and start grooming horses with a man named Mr. Leslie Bake. It's me who had won the first race for him with us in Stars and Stripes. Warren, Mar My Ryan Warren Myers used to own that horse in those days. So I start working with Aswa Lee. So before we go into that, yeah. so you actually came to the track with the intention to be a jockey? Yes, that's what I, I came here for. And when that didn't work out, no? I turned to the side of a groom. Okay, and, and um, when did you get your groom's license? I got my groom license in 1969, exactly. And who was the trainer? Um, the trainer was Aswa Lee. And then I worked with Aswa Lee 
one race laws like the Black Magic, Cesfidine, and all those laws that they say couldn't have won races, but that's true. I'm a man who loves to take care of horses the best way. That's how I come out on top of my opponent at all the time. In those days and now, how, what ratings would you give the grooms then as against now? In those days, at least the wages were cheap, but, the, but at least if the economical resources was down that you could have afforded yourself to buy food and survive. But there and then racing has improved a whole lot, tremendously for what I'm seeing presently now. Because if a groom at one certain races, you can come out and with X amount of financial resources. And then, there and then, I, groom is not getting the respect that they're supposed to get out of racing presently. Because of the people that just come into racing, the man who come to grab quick and run. But racing is not like that. The whole fraternity of racing is a program. It's not an overnight issue. As, so, as a man who has been in this for a long time, could you tell the general public what it entails when you come in in the morning, what you have to do in looking about a horse, when the you process get, you have to go through? Yes. When you get in the stable first thing in the morning, you'd have to get yourself changed because the horse is, is like that. And muck out your stable, sponge out your ass, saddle that ass and take him to the track. When you get back from the track with that ass, you have to get him a, a fresh bath and there, there and then and take care of the ass, feed the ass and things like that. But particularly for, for this reason, you know, I'm saying that the attendance that a groom should have, the privilege that a groom should have got in racing is not there. Because most of the people who come to racing and who own horses, who train horses, they don't show the grooms that respect that they should be supposed to have got from them. Because a groom is a very important factor in racing. Because when everybody had gone to their sophisticated places around, it's the groom who left with the horse in the stable. So you see, the particular issue that a groom have to take up is very important to the, part, to the game, the sector and the whole. Have you enjoyed your journey in racing? Yes, I enjoy my journey in racing because even this horse that we're standing in front of presently. Um, Who is this horse? Sensational move. I took this horse from non winner to and he's now in overnight allowance. So that to show you the performance is very good. So I appreciate the whole issue. And there's a gentleman, there's a trainer by the name of Errol Sobrati. He had taught me a whole lot in the game. He had died a couple of years back. And there and then I'm working with his son presently. That in particular for what me and Gary Sobrati have gone through, you have to say I'm his apprentice master. Because when he was a jack and he couldn't have won any race, his father gave me a horse by the name of Prince Overan. And he asked me on the track how oh, he's supposed to row that horse. And I say, just keep him on the track. Twelve lengths he had won by on that, that occasion. The other week, he asked me the same question. Oh, I'm supposed to ride the said horse. And I say, stay on the track. He win won by ten lengths. So I'm working with him, with him now presently. And I'm enjoying the maximum capacity of relaxation when it comes to working with a trainer like this. Because it's not a trainer that is restricted on his groom. You only want to know that you're taking care of his horse. Just like that. About how many winners you have looked after in racing from your start? To count winners that I've groomed, it's don't reach a hundred. I think it's about in the, the bracket of 80, 85 races I've won. And, and how many trainers have you worked with during your time? I work with uh, Aswa Lee, Sir Jackson, Dapper Dan Jackson, I worked with Leslie Blake, I worked with Mr. Freeman, Arbor Freeman, and those trainers. Those are the trainers that, and I, I also worked with Mr. Roderick Forbes, 
have one with the arts, with, for Mr. Roderick Falls, with name Juan Accord, owned by Fedigums in Spanish Town. And Mr. Forbes, those people had died, and I'm still here in races, so I give God thanks and praises for that. Because presently now, I'm in a good position for both health and financial resources. So, so I must thank God for that particular issue. And with you saying that, how much longer are we going to see you? The gift of God is the turn of life and the wages of sin is death. So I tell myself, mighty God, go before me and do thy word thyself. So I tell myself that I think the Father God is going to permit me to go a, a, a lot a long way within this particular time where racing is concerned. And I feel very proud of grooming horses because it doesn't matter what position I ask into. Us always change for me because of the care that I got to give to us. Because I love horses. Not the money, not the financial resources that I've got out of the game, but I love horses. When you are not in horse racing, doing your general horse racing business, what do you like to do? Well, I like to get to the sea, take a swim, get some fresh steamed fish to eat, get back to my house and take a few drinks. That, that, in that, those days, I used to drink a lot. But when I get my two drink, I always sell it same way, can keep going. <laughs> so, I don't overdo it. So you love your little drinking, yes, but yes, what, yes. what kind of drink um, you enjoy? Well, I'm a white rum man, you know. Yeah. It's the best to drink that selling any <laughs> location of a bar. And, <laughs> and I, I know you have the name Fish and Rice, so yes. I still am going to ask you, what kind of food do you enjoy? I enjoy fish and rice of a fact because no one in this world can steam fish like I do and Mr. Sobrat will tell you that too. Gary Sobrat will tell you because he said that we need to steam fish all over. The America, England, Canada, all true. And there are no one that ever steam a fish. Let him enjoy it the way he enjoy the one that I steam. For me, him, Alan Maraj and Everwal War Jr. We go to down. I was living in Marchman Road. I down by Marchman Road at that time and I have a snookhead in the fridge so I go down there and steam it for all of us that on that particular day. And they enjoy it and I mix some lemonade with lime. And, <laughs> lime, 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 and it was nice. Yeah, man. What about family? Oh, yes. Along the line, I've got four children. One with one woman, and three with the, the woman that I was living with, with and, and she died a couple of years ago. Want to one, of the, one of them was a police. And they killed him out by Tyson where I was living at that time. But from he had got graduated, I should have think twice. Two of my son is in America. And I live with me and my one daughter that live at the house that I live in too, at in Trinard, Portmore. And my granddaughter. So I find it comfortable living this way because I've enjoyed racing and I've racing it is my personal sustainable resource that I get cash from and I've been doing tremendously good because the average my, my particular standard in racing I could be a trainer but at least the experience that I've got is greater than a lot of trainers that get licensed recently that I've got licensed recently but I don't watch that I watch to get an ass that can is active and can let me achieve and I always take care of the horses them that I have under my portfolio. So how have. many horses do you have under your care at the moment? Um, two presently. Two presently. Yeah. Have you ever gone abroad or anywhere else to No, not at all. Booming? Not at all. I enjoyed being in Jamaica as long as I'm around horses. I, I couldn't leave this interview without asking you about something that I personally know about you. You have always boasted that you are the best singer. Not probably only on the track, but yes. anywhere. I would like for Fish and Rice now 
to give Jamaica and the world anything that you want to put here, as long as it's worthy for airplay. Children of Zion, the gate is always open. <laughs> That's the only way we'll have to go. It will be good to be there by the gateway of Zion of love. Good to be there, it's good to be there. Look how many rivers we'll always have to cross. Life got such a long, long way to go. But it will be good to be there by the gateway of Zion of love. Good to be there, it's good to be there. Children of Zion, the gate is always open. That's the only way we we'll let you go. It will be good to be there by the gate of Zion of love. It's good to be there. It's good to be there. <laughs> yes, we shall rise. <laughs> Entertainer extraordinaire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fish and Rice, in, in your 50 odd years here at the track, which is the best horse you have groomed in your estimation? Yeah. The best horse that I have groomed is the horse that I'm standing in front of presently because the only horse that horse I have won five races in a row with, which is sensational move. This horse created a stir the last time, beating some real crack. Runners, stable meat. Yeah, yes, yeah. Desert of Malibu. Yeah. Emperors of the Cat. Mm -hmm. Madeline Sunshine. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised by that performance? Would be. Were you surprised by. No, I wasn't surprised because of the way that I administrate to my horses. When other racers' room has gone to the places abound, I always get to the bush, try to find out something that the horse would love. That if, he, if that horse was in the bush, he would have got these things which he hasn't seen when he's in a stall. So I go to the bush and try to get these things to make the horse happy. Mm -hmm. And when the horse is happy, he will give you good performance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're off for the Reggae Month trophy. Desert of Malibu didn't start that well, reared at the start. Madeline Sunshine is running quickly toward the far side as they sort themselves out. Yellowstone is racing in the middle. Sensational move not too far away. A gift from Ben, more toward this side. Emperor of the Cats is the one racing right against the stand fence. And Desert of Malibu, the favorite, now begins to get going as they head away now toward the final quarter. Emperor of the Cats under the fence. Desert of Malibu in between horses. A gift from Ben and Yellowstone race toward the center. Sensational move is also running quickly as they have left the quarter pole and now make their way toward the furlong marker. Sensational move in the middle. Emperor of the Cats under the stand fence. Desert of Malibu has more running to do, but Sensational move has them off their legs and is opening up the gap inside the final 16th. It's Sensational move and the devastating Dane Dawkins coming away from them to win the Reggae Month trophy easily in the end by maybe five. Emperor of the Cats second. Madeline Sunshine is next ahead of Desert of Malibu. Press conference is back in fifth. Again, you don't find many grooms here doing 50 odd years, and you have that under your belt. Which is the best house you have seen run here at Caymanas? Best house that I have seen run... Or horses. Horses is that run here. Well, prob practically and probably you don't really know those horses. But I like the horse, that name, Legal Light. Mm -hmm. Legal Light is a very tremendous horse. Yeah, and his, his action is just like the horse that I'm standing in front presently. Mm -hmm. Because he walks slow, he do everything slow, you cannot rush him, he do anything, everything on his own merits. But when it comes on a race day, you don't catch him when it lasts too far and it's running. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when he pass, he pass you forever. <laughs> yeah, man, legal light. Who are some of the trainers that you have enjoyed working with, personally? Um, Aswal Lee. Errol Sobrati and presently Gary Sobrati. When Gary Sobrati had just got his license, I'm the groom that won his second race as a trainer. 
with mm -hmm. us by the name of Remington Express. He had won the first race as a trainer with Royal Invitation. And then the second race is Remington Express with Mr. Da Costa out of the street. Mm -hmm. But I've been doing this performance for over years. Every time as a groom, I have one horse among the top trainers them working with a particular trainer. I always come on top of my opponent. Outside of trainers that you have worked with, or some of the other trainers that you, you would have seen perform over the years and they just get maximum respect from you? Aswa Lee, for sure. Dapper Dan Jackson. Henry Harrison, because me and that trainer, Henry Harrison, had won the first six and a half furlong race that ran and came on as far with us by the name of Island Fling, written by David Mackenzie. Mm -hmm. Beat us by the name of Reeswood. <laughs> so, those are trainers and trainers that I enjoy working with. What about jockeys? Who are some jockeys. of the best you have seen here? My greatest jockey in the world is Emilio Rodriguez. Bimbo. It won a race and asked him, Kiss Kadi for me. Over the, over the, from same Garrett Sobrad stable. That was a race, like it's a couple book ride. Mm -hmm. The horse that he had beat on that occasion um, was way in front. And nobody had gave Emilio Rodriguez a chance and Kiss Kadi. And the last whiskers of the race, he'd won the race by a shot. <laughs> so. That's a very good jack. Anybody else? Fan Mr. Griffiths, Winston. And then after Winston, Griffiths, you have a man named George Usang. <laughs> Mr. George Usang, man. <laughs> now that jack can really ride artists. Those three jacks that I call. Well, I'm not saying about the past jack them for the years because it was Lick Lads Cat, not Sword Park. And then after came on Spark, 1959, up the line, so. And race now have a far way to go, because you have some younger racers, men now coming up, and then younger jackets and things like that, so. But presently now, this little youth that named Roman, from down, from Newland, I, I gave him a lot of tremendous future. I see a future in him that he's going to be the top jack one of these fine here. We wish you all the best going forward. And we're going to come and test you with this fish, this steam fish thing to save you are the best. With the steam, steam fish. The steam fish. We're, we're going, going to, to come and test you. Steam fish, yeah, man. Because we now. want to taste some of the best steam fish yes, man. from Go the man down. who is known yes, for man. fish. Good man. You don't know, steam fish just like putting them in a pot and I'll see them. <laughs> they don't know what they that. You season your fish before and put it down, make it soak and they lay yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Blessings, fish and rice. Blessings. All the best. Thank you for watching another video produced by the team from quickgallopjaya.com and its YouTube channel, The Quick Galloper. Please stay on the channel for other enlightening videos on those involved in local horse racing. Please like, subscribe, and press the notification bell.